Hi there, this is Unmesh from Pixin Perfect. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. I wanted to show you something. Have a look at this. What is this? This is a picture of a lady sitting on a bunch of stairs, right? There's a nice perspective going on. Everything is looking nice and clean. However, let me ask you a question. If I start sketching on it, painting on it, or place something on it, the paint will be applied how? It will be applied in such a way that this is a flat surface. It will not treat it as there's a perspective going on or there's a nice lady sitting on it. It won't consider any of that. It will just paint on it like it's a flat surface. Why? Because this, my friend, is a flat surface. Similarly, in Photoshop, if we just start painting on this picture, let me show you. If, I, if we just start painting, right, the paint is being applied as if this is a flat surface. Because it is a flat surface. However, there's a feature in Photoshop that lets you define the perspective, no matter how complex that is. So if you can define the perspective in Photoshop and then paint on it, it will be applied in such a way that there's actually this scene happening and the paint will go along with the perspective and the feature is called vanishing point so today we're gonna learn how to use the power of vanishing points to apply any graphic on any surface according to the perspective no matter how complex that is it's gonna be super fun so without any further ado let's get started Back in the magical world of Photoshop and if you want to go ahead and download this photo and follow along, you know what to do, check the links in the description. The first step is defining the perspective. This is just telling Photoshop the nature of perspective, that's it. If you are not creating anything, applying anything, pasting anything, this is just telling Photoshop the nature of the image and the perspective. And the way we do that is by going to filter and then vanishing point. Now, we just need to create one plane and from there we will take it forward have a look at a plane that you can create boundaries around so in this case i can see that there's a nice boundary around this step right there that we can use to start our perspective plane to do that we're going to use the create plane tool right there all right it will be selected by default now click on the four points of this plane so i'm going to click in right there and let's continue don't worry about the subject right now. We're going to erase that area later. Mask that later. All right. This looks pretty fine. Now, this rectangle, this plane is blue and it will create the best results. However, sometimes you might come across red rectangles. It doesn't mean that you cannot work with it, but it will not create good results. So, make sure your rectangle is blue. There's one more a variant of this. Sometimes you might see a yellow rectangle. That is kind of okay. So, think of it like this. Red, stay away from it. Yellow is kind of okay. Blue is the best. So, we are going to adjust the points accurately. Why? Because this will lead to other planes. And if one plane is not right, everything will fall out of place. So, let's zoom in by pressing Ctrl or Command Plus. Scroll down and just adjust the points to the right place. So here, I'm going to place it right there. All right. Now let's move on to the right hand side. Scroll it. It is a bit CPU intensive work, so it will be a little laggy, but that's okay. It totally depends upon the resolution of the image as well. So this is fine. Let's come down here. Scroll to the right a little. Adjust this accordingly. Let's go to the left hand side. We want to make sure that it's not red, so we might have to adjust it just a little bit. This looks okay. Now let's zoom out. There we are. And by the way, you can control the number of grids by using grid size. The higher the grid size, the higher the grid size will be, the lesser the grids. The lower the grid size, the smaller it will be with more grids. Okay. To extend this, all you have to do is just extend it from the left hand side, click and drag and have a look it will extend in perspective it will maintain that perspective now this plane is fine what if i want to extend it from this side in 90 degrees so this plane that you see right here is just like this right now i don't want to extend it like this i just want to extend it in 90 degrees like this and from here another 90 degrees and from here another 90 degrees are you understanding what i'm trying to say to do that select the create plane tool again or shortcut c now if you hold the alt key or the option key and click and drag from this point 
it will extend a plane which is perpendicular to the existing one. Or in other words, it will extend a plane 90 degrees to the existing one. So if this is the plane, it will extend it in this way, which is 90 degrees, all right? If you take it down, it will be 90 degrees to the bottom. But keep in mind, the angle between this and this will be 90 degrees. You can, of course, change the angle if you wish to. Have a look, angle at the top. You can change it from 90 to something else. See the angle changing, but we're gonna keep it at 90. Now we need to always make sure that the planes are accurately positioned. So let's zoom in and make sure that it's on the line of the stairs. Right there, perfectly. Zoom out. Let's do the same for the other stairs. So again, select the Create Plane tool, shortcut C, hold the Alt key or the Option key, create a plane, click and drag. This will be again 90 degrees to the previous one. See how we are creating the stairs? Pretty easy, isn't it? Again, press C, hold the Alt key or the Option key, click and drag, and continue the same thing. I think that's enough. Let's zoom out. So we have created these nice planes, but the front is still left out. So extend it that way as well. So select this plane first, and then again, press C for the Create Plane tool, and then hold the Alt key or the Option key, click and drag from here, extend, and again, we have to press C, hold the Alt key or the Option key, click and drag from here. There you go. Now, once the planes are created, the perspective is defined. All we need to do now is to hit OK and say to Photoshop, all right, this is the perspective. From now onwards, if I paint anything on it, if I paste something on it, it will follow the perspective. Just hit OK when you're satisfied. So right here at the corner, hit OK. Now nothing happens to the image. Have a look. It, it's just, there is nothing because we just defined it. However, if you go back to filter, vanishing point, have a look, everything is still there, isn't it? Just hit cancel for now. So what are we gonna do here is to paste a graphic. So here we are in our finder. I'm just gonna drag this pattern and drop it into Photoshop. So let's open Photoshop, drop it over the image in the canvas. Now, let's make it a little bigger. All right, now it didn't paste according to the perspective. We need to paste it inside of the vanishing point dialog box. So first of all, let's make a selection of it. Hold the control or command, click on the thumbnail of the layer of the pattern. A selection around it has been made. Now press control or command C to copy it. Now you can turn off this layer, it doesn't matter anymore. Press control or command D to deselect that. Now let's create a blank layer on top of this one. And we can name this graphic on stair, right? Now, let's go to filter and then vanishing point. As you can see, it will still be there. Now let's paste it by pressing Control or Command V. Now it might not look right in the beginning, but I'm gonna show you what to do if it looks too good to be true. So just drag it and drop it on the stairs and have a look at this. Isn't that fantastic? Now, of course, this is too big. So all we have to do now is to control the size of this thing. So to control the size, it's pretty simple. Press Control or Command T for the transformation tool. Now, let's just move it a little bit to the left so that we can see the points. All right, there are the points. You can stretch it anywhere you want. You can make it smaller or bigger. So I'm gonna hold the Shift key to keep the proportions and then click and drag it inside to make it smaller. Let's bring it to the right a little bit. Do that one more time. We are just making it smaller. As you can see, this size looks okay. We're gonna make it a little smaller and we can just start from right there at the back. So let's zoom in and make sure the starting position looks okay. All right, that looks fine. Let's zoom out. Make sure it is in the middle. So it is pretty much in the middle. You can use the arrow keys to move it left or right. Now we need to extend it. To extend it again, we are just making duplicates of it. Hold the Alt key or the Option key, click and drag to make a duplicate of the same thing. Now you can always hold the Shift key once you have dragged it out to maintain the same line, to extend it in the same vertical line. 
So we're gonna make sure that it joins properly. So let's zoom in and make sure there is no gap. If there is a gap, it's gonna be a problem later. See the gap right there? You wanna make sure there is no gap. Use the arrow keys. Overlap is okay, but just make sure there is no gap. Zoom in. All right, that looks about right. Let's zoom out and do the same thing again. And this time, you can be as much careful as you want. I'm just gonna do it quickly. So hold the Alt key or the Option key. Click and drag. Hold the Shift key to maintain the line. You can always make sure that the ends of both images are joining properly by zooming in and checking. Again, we will repeat the same thing. Hold the Alt key or the Option key. Click and drag. Let's make sure that both of them are in line on the side as well. This looks to be about right. Let's zoom out. And once you're satisfied with the position of everything, just hit OK. Everything has been applied in that design. Now, of course, we need to change blend modes to see if it looks right. So first of all, let's change the blend mode of the graphic on stairs from normal to multiply. Multiply is a blend mode which darkens stuff. So see if it looks right. This looks perfectly fine, but have a look at the graphic. It's so sharp. How can it be so sharp if you paint it on pieces of rocks, right? So we should have blurred it before applying it right here. But it's my mistake that I did not blur it. And that's what I was trying to tell you before. If it doesn't look right, you might have to blur it in the beginning and then paste the graphic because it's rocks, right? It cannot be that sharp. So, do you really want me to do this again, blur it and then apply that again? I don't want to do it, I'm pretty lazy. So let's cheat our way through it. Here's how we're gonna do it. So with the graphic on stairs layer selected, change it back to normal for now. And then, let's go to filter, blur gallery, field blur. This is pretty nice because this allows you to add different points of blur. So, right here, the blur will be more and back there, the blur will be less because it's far away. So now, let's just increase the blur to two pixels. Let's see how that looks. Let's zoom in and have a look at right here. Two pixels is not enough. Let's go for four, what do you think? Four is kinda too much. Let's go for three. Three looks perfectly fine. Now at the back, as it gradually should decrease, I'm gonna keep one right there, and at the back it should be around, around one. One is okay. Let's try it with four. Four right here and two right there at the back. Hit OK. Let's see how that looks. So we have added a little bit blur. Now when you change the blend mode to multiply, it will look more realistic. From normal, let's change it to multiply. Now if you want to keep it sharp and clear, that's up to you. You don't have to do this. Now in the multiply, we are darkening stuff. We don't want to darken the bright areas, right? So double click on the right hand side of the layers, take all the darkening away from the bright parts of the image by taking the slide of the underlying layer from right to left. We are actually deleting or hiding the bright parts of the layers which are underneath it from the current layer. So what is the layer which is underneath it? The main subject layer with all the stairs. So let's control it. This is very harsh. Hold the Alt key or the Option key. Click on the slider to break it apart and then make the transition smoother. There we go. Now for the bright areas, we will do just the opposite. Now with the graphic on stairs layer selected, press Ctrl or Command J and make a copy of it. This time, change the blend mode from multiply to screen. Now screen is a blend mode which brightens stuff. So we need to take it away from the dark areas and only apply it in the bright areas. So double click on the right hand side of the layer, do just the opposite. Return it back to normal and take it away from the dark areas. This is just for the bright areas. Hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the slider to break it apart and there you have it. See, you are just applying it to the bright areas. There we go. Hit OK once you are satisfied and you can make a group of both of these. Select the first one, hold the Ctrl or Command, select the second one and then press Ctrl or Command G. Here's the before. Here's the after. Now to make it even more realistic, guess what we're gonna do? Just decrease the opacity. So click and drag on the word opacity to the left. Let's see how much we want. About 90% looks good. Now, of course, there's something wrong with it. It's also being applied on top of the subject. What do we do now? Simple, 
make a selection of the subject and mask it out. So first of all, let's turn off the group. Select the background layer and then select the magic wand tool or the quick selection tool and at the top you will see select subject. Now this feature is available only in the latest versions of Photoshop. I think CC 2018 or 19, I'm not really sure but in the latest versions. Now once you click on select subject, it will automatically create a selection around the subject by using Adobe AI and all of that fancy stuff. And then now you select the group, turn it on and we need to create an opposite mask. We don't want to apply it in the selection but outside of the selection. To create an opposite mask, hold the Alt key or the Option key and then click on the mask button. Now it's away from the subject. Now you might have to work on the mask by selecting the mask, take the brush, white as the foreground color, select a soft round brush at the top and paint on the areas which are left out. Have a look at this. This area is pretty much left out. So we're gonna just paint on that and you get the idea. You can take all the time in the world to kind of do it. So paint white on in here. This area was left out. There we go. Any area that was left out or if there's an excess paint, you can press X, change it to black, foreground color to black and then paint it away. So you can take all the time in the world to do this. But that is basically the idea. Now when we paint on rough rocks or concrete like this, the paint is not always even. And even if it is, when it gets sold, it gets kind of grungy and it the paint goes away from certain areas. And we can actually create that effect by adding a texture to the mask. Let's see how to do this. So here we are in our file explorer or finder. I'm just going to drag this texture and drop it on a brand new document, not over the same image. Drop it right there at the top. This opens as a brand new document. But this texture is very large. We need to make it a little smaller. In other words, we need to make sure that the pieces of this texture are smaller so that it don't appear huge right here in this image. So here's what we gotta do. Let's extend the canvas. So first of all, let's unlock the layer right there by clicking on the lock. And then let's go to image and then canvas size. And then increase the width and the height. So what is the current width and the height? 3000 by 2000. Let's just double it. Make sure relative is checked and let's type in 3000 and height 2000. You're just doubling it. Hit OK. Now this is a small texture. We need to extend it. How do we extend it? Content aware fill. So let's select the magic wand tool. Select the outside of it. Click on the outside. Everything but the image is selected. Now we don't want to create a line when we extend it. So we want to make sure that the selection just digs in. To do that, go to select, modify and expand. We can expand it by four or five pixels. Hit OK. So it expands inside by four or five pixels, whatever number you put. And then simply go to edit, content aware fill. If you're using the latest versions of Photoshop, a brand new dialog box will pop up where you can change all of these settings. More in-depth video about this right here. You can watch it. So I'm going to change the color adaptation. It, let's leave it at default. So have a look at how it's filling it. It's pretty nice. But the problem with this is all the darks and the blacks are on one side. We want it to be spread out. So let's try mirroring. Yes, that kind of looks okay. But you know, there is a problem with this. Let's try rotation adaptation. I'm going to set it to high. So how do you want to output it in a new layer? All the areas that you filled in a brand new layer or in the same layer? Just let's not complicate things. We're going to do it in the current layer. So choose current layer, hit OK. It's done. Now as you can see, selection is still active. So press Ctrl or Command D to deselect. Now, this is very huge. It can make our processing very slow. So let's decrease the image size. Let's go to image, image size. Let's decrease it to 3000 by 2000. This is OK, hit OK. This just makes the size smaller and makes the process a little faster. Let's select all of this. Press Ctrl or Command A to select all of it. Ctrl or Command C. Now it is copied to the clipboard. Now let's get back to our image and then let's create a group of this group. Why? Because then we can create one more mask. So with this group selected, press Ctrl or Command G. All right. And now let's create a mask. Click on the mask button. Now in this mask, we're going to paste that texture. But wait, if we just simply paste that texture, it will be pretty flat, right? We want it to follow the perspective. So let's create a new layer first. Then let's go to filter and then vanishing point.
Now let's try pasting it by pressing Ctrl or Command V. And then, before applying it to the perspective, let's rotate it. Ctrl or Command T for the transform tool. Rotate it first. And then, let's drag it and drop it into the perspective. There we are. As you can see, it will be very large. We need to make it smaller like we did before by finding the edge and then holding the shift key and dragging it inside. Now there we have the texture. All we have to do is to just paste it above the graphic. So at the top right there, we have placed it. Now hold the Alt key or the Option key just as we did with the graphic and then drag it. Just cover the entire thing. You don't have to be very accurate regarding this. This is just a texture. Hold the Alt key or the Option key again. Click and drag it. And there we are. It's done. Once you're happy with this, just hit OK. Now, we need to paste it inside the mask. Hold the Ctrl or Command, click on it to make a selection, or you can also press Ctrl or Command A to make an overall selection. Ctrl or Command C, right? Now, let's come to this one. Hold the Alt or Option. Click on the Mask button, Ctrl or Command V. It doesn't paste properly. However, if you press Ctrl Shift V or Command Shift V, it will paste in the exact same location. Ctrl or Command D to deselect that. Now you can turn this off if you wish to. Have a look at the texture. It's becoming more and more realistic. If you want, you can try inverting it by selecting the mask and then press Ctrl or Command I. See how that looks. This version or this version. Absolutely your choice. I'm gonna go with this. If you also wanna play with the contrast of the mask, with the mask selected, press Ctrl or Command L for levels and then you can play with these sliders to increase or decrease visibility and control the grunge. So I'm going to go with something like this and hit OK. Now also as you can see the corners are pretty sharp. So you can make it smoother, that's not a big deal. You can select the mask and then take a brush. Take any favorite brush of your choice, even the soft round brush will do. Then you can simply start painting here with black, kind of make it a little grungy if you wish to. That is something you can take your time to do. You can also choose one of the grungy brushes, special effects brushes that you can download directly from Adobe. These spray brushes and all of that. Dry media brushes. So I'm going to take this uh, charcoal brush and you can actually paint here with a charcoal brush. That's fun too. So the possibilities are limitless. I'm going to go back to my soft round brush. That seemed to work pretty nicely. You can actually erase it from the sides a little bit if you wish to. So there you go. Let's zoom out and have a look. So I took the time to clean the edges and here is the final results. So that's how easily you can define the perspective and then paint on it, paste anything on it, or do whatever you like. And whatever you do will be according to the perspective. Because if you have a look inside the vanishing point dialog box, let's just create a brand new layer. Let's go to filter and then vanishing point. You can do anything. You can paste stuff. You can use the clone stamp tool. You can even paint. So if you paint, have a look, it's happening according to the perspective. Isn't that wonderful? So all we did was defining the perspective. After that, using blend modes, blend if, and all of that stuff, we applied the graphic in a realistic manner. And we have talked about the same principles in videos before. But the main concept of this video was defining the perspective using Vanishing Point. I hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tip, trick or tutorial. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on Patreon and helping keep Pix Imperfect free for everybody forever. Thanks so much for all your support. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.